You are now tuning into A and M Radio, the official online radio show in the arts and music. You guys can check us out on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash the arts and music or on Twitter at the arts and music and our website www.theartsandmusic.com if you would like to be a guest on AM radio email the arts and music help at gmail.com again that is the arts and music help at gmail.com oh i'm great no complaints just getting ready for this for this uh return to battleground I know. I hear. I've, I've done my. I've done my research, and I'm not too into the battle scene. I know a few people. I did watch the the World Battle League trailer, and that's that's dope. That event looks crazy. Like I, I watch them online. I don't. As I said, I don't know like the ins and outs, but it's it's definitely a dope. It's definitely a dope little community y'all got, and and I I definitely admire it. It terrifies me, but I admire it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because I rock stages, you know, I, like that's what I do for a living, and I'm more of a positive MC, so like I'm terrified of like having to get up in front of somebody and be rude. So <laughs> you know what's crazy? I can relate because that's the lane that I'm, I really want to go in. But you know, I realized something about this music industry: you got to find your way in, and that's what right. You got to get in where you fit in. You. Word, word, word. Right, get in and then give them what I want. All right, so so we have a few questions for you. Obviously, theartsandmusic.com, that's who we're representing today. You were on MTV in 2003 and four. What have you been doing since? Uh, well, uh, just just different stuff. Um, I don't know, you know, uh, I don't know how far the reach goes, but um, after the MTV battle, we uh, started a. Um, it was a thing in Philadelphia called Two World for the Streets. Um, started by a homie of mine named Big Star, and what he would do is he would take the hottest MC from Philly and just pack us up in a van and whatever state was closest we would just go and battle who was up whoever was in the building you're awesome that is so great that's basically what we do on the perpetual tour as well only so it's kind of coupled with planning things and not planning things and then open mic so I admire that man that's that's beautiful beautiful that's what you gotta do so you gotta get yes, you gotta yes, get your name out there you gotta reach further than your own community as well as your community so yes ma'am yes ma'am I agree uh, pretty much it. Yeah. Um, after that, what did I do? After that, we uh, we started this thing in Philadelphia. Uh, it was called Top Class. It's me, uh, Reed Dollars, um, Kaboom, and Nature. This is a lot of us. So, make a long story short, we started a big movement. Um, at this point, it was probably about 2005, 2006. Um, we just started independently putting out our own videos, DVDs, mixtapes, and we were actually making a living off of that. And that just transferred into everybody having their own little buzzes. Um, like I said, after the battle thing, then it was Fight Club. That was another battle league. We just did a whole lot of stuff. Right. Well, that's good. Did it? Did you find that it helped you? You know, did the publicity help you get further? Yes, it, it did. But at the time, I didn't know enough. You know, all of you know, like now, there's a bunch of people that know about marketing and all of this right. stuff. At that time, the battle rap thing was kind of like shunned because it was like, yo, battle rappers can't make music, so keep them out of here. So I kind of got in the loop of just making music for like the last, I'd say, three or four years. So just being able to just make music, I think, that helped me be more of a well-rounded artist. Yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely true. You got to hit all aspects. It's, it's important to have everything holistic in your career so that you can maintain throughout, you know, the world and, and you know, longevity. You want to do this your whole life, so that's definitely true. Um, yes, ma'am. So in a battle, who do you think benefits more from from them? Do you think it's the rapper or do you think it's the event holders? I think, honestly, I think, um, you know, it's great for the leagues that those the battles, but it's actually better for the battlers just because um, you get to create a whole fan base. You know, it might not be a million people, but you can literally create a fan base of a couple of thousand strong that will just support anything you put out. The leagues, it's harder for them because they got to compete with every other league. So I definitely say the rappers. Okay, so if it's the rappers, then... Doesn't it seem like after they get all this crazy exposure, they can't really even, you know, go a full three rounds, like, let alone deliver a whole battle? You know, that's kind of, kind of... That's the gift yeah, and the curse of battle rap, right? making um, the big jump that it has to the mainstream, because, you know, it used to be we was hungry for this, and God would have more rounds than the time that was allowed. Now it's, you know, guys are making more money than people that make that, that great jobs. You're making three, four thousand dollars within nine minutes. So this right. is how come guys don't make three rounds. They just get cocky. So how do you think you'll be different from them? 
um, I know what it's like to be at the top and the bottom. I, you know, from MTV, you know, winning the battle, or getting signed to Def Jam. I know what it's like to have people calling your phone off the hook, and then I know what it's like to have your phone stop ringing. So for me, I just want to take advantage of every opportunity. These guys look at it like, ah, oh, this is just a battle. I'll get another one. I look at this as my way to get where I want to get. This is not, yeah. um, me just want to be a bad rapper forever. Word, it's life. It's a life thing. It's not a, it's not a fun little sport for today. I agree. Right, right. I agree with a lot of what you're saying. I love it. Thank you. This is inspiring. This is this is good. It's good to hear that from another realm of of hip hop and another another realm of music in general. You know, so right, right. So what rap? Uh, what battle rappers do you think that uh, are overrated? Um, you know, for me, I, I don't um, particularly say a certain battle rapper is overrated. I think any battle rapper is overrated that's getting in the ring and coming with less than the amount of rounds that they're supposed to have. So that, that could be anybody. I don't care if it's the number one rapper on this planet. That could be Loaded Lux. If he Ooh. gets in that ring and he doesn't have three rounds, he's overrated. So it could be anybody. Wow, man. Great, great answer. Great answer. Um, so speaking of Loaded Lux, how do you feel you would do against him or, or uh, Hollow Dadan or even Goods? These are three people that um, I'm kind of unfamiliar with, so you're going to have to let me know. Right, right. For me, um, it would be um, like I'm different. I don't want to just go battle for a paycheck. It would be I have to um, want to battle the person. I have to be inspired to write for you. So everybody you name, though they're good, they're not somebody that I would want to kill. For instance, Lux is already Lux. No matter if you beat him or not, he has such a fan base <laughs> that it, it won't matter. He's going to win regardless. So um, for me, I wouldn't even say who would win out of those three guys. I think it would just be whoever I'm in front of, they just better be ready. Right. Right. All right. So in the battle world, Math Hoffa has been ducking you. Is this true or false? What are your thoughts on that? Um, you know, it's funny. Um, I think I, I, I um, I realize, or, or let me just say this differently. I think I, I come to a different state of mind as far as how I look at battle rap and Math Hoffa. That whole situation. Make a long story short. Um, I called him out. Um, I didn't know that. You know, in battle rap nowadays, you got to know the guys in the league. You got to be cool and homies to get a battle. I thought it was just like normal, call somebody out, we get in the ring and we battle. So, make a long story short, I called him out, he pretty much was saying no, but we were, you know, having little funny debates on Twitter, so it just got to a point where I just kind of left it alone with a bitter taste kind of for him and the URL, and I just kind of realized, you know what, nobody owes me anything, it don't matter what I did yesterday, it's all about what I'm doing today, so I said, let me just work my way back up. So, technically, I don't think he was ducking, I think he was just being realistic, I don't know what Rain Man came and I'm not going to just jump in the ring with him. Lord, I, again, great answer. Like, you, you really know how to answer questions. You've been doing this for a minute, I can tell. Um, yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, so, what can we, yeah, excuse me. So, what can we expect for the battle on May 31st? That's in uh, Boston, right? Uh, that's in Philly. That's going to be in Philly, actually. In Philly, okay. So, it's in it's, Philly. Um, what you can expect is just, just hunger, just, you know, just just a great delivery, just a whole lot of old school, not old school, because I don't want to um, hate myself, but when I say old school, I just mean um, just traditional bars, aggression, not no antics, I'm not pulling out no costumes or nothing crazy, you could just expect an all around, just great performance. Alright. And then what's what's next for you after this? Do you have something planned that you'd like to share with your audience? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, shout out to WBL, that's the league, um, that's the official league of Philadelphia, the whole tri-state actually. Um, we got something, we got another event coming up in July. Our goal pretty much with the WBL is to bring the biggest guys from URL and KOTD to Philly and our league and just basically give our MCs a platform to battle the big guys. So I got a matchup coming in July. Um, I can't really say who, who yet, but it's a vet in uh, a battle game. come on. Um, Not even a little hint? Um, yeah, I can give you a hint. Let me, you know, because I'm pretty much, we've been pretty much putting it out there through Twitter and Facebook just a little bit. We're waiting for the um, official word from my man, Ed Ice. Like, he's a URL veteran. Like, if people don't know about him, just Google him. His name Ed Ice. Like I said, he's an OG. He done battled almost everybody. So that's who I'm gunning for in July. Then it's back to the music. All right. And where can we find your music, speaking of that? Um, you can actually, I just tweet stuff all day. You know, of course you can go to, you know, YouTube and all that stuff and just look up Rain Man or, or my alias, Izzy Pharrell, I-W-C-I-E-F-A-R-E-A-L. Or you can just follow me on Twitter. That's what I suggest. Um, LeBron Rain, L-E-B-R-O-N-R-E-I-G-N. Just look me up. I always tweet my music. I 
always send out links. So it's not really one specific place. Just look for me everywhere. And um, sometime soon after my battle, I'm going to be working on releasing my first um, album for sale on iTunes. All right. Well, what's the name of that again? Um, oh, you mean the album? Yeah. What's the name of the album again? It's actually to be determined. Oh. Um, you know, that's another thing I learned. If you notice, you know, a lot of the rappers, you know, they'll be like, my album's called To Death Do His Part, and then a dead drive is mm-hmm. called uh, Roses and Beer or something just totally mm-hmm. different. So I don't want to give it a name until the music's done. I know the direction of it, and then I'll have the, the name ready. Ah, that's all right. Understandable, man, and understandable. You can't put anything out there that's false. So, and then, did you also right, know? Right. Do you do you ever make any references to Sean Kemp since you call yourself the Rain Man? You know what's funny? I, I used to, I used to a lot, and then um, you know, um, as times change, you know, the diehard sports fans they know who it is, but you know, after a while, you start realizing, hey, these kids, they're they're old school as Allen Iverson. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of these kids have no clue who the hell Sean Kemp is. That's funny. I I rocked his sneakers, the Sean Kemp sneakers for basketball. I played basketball when I was in middle school, and those were the those were the kicks I rocked. So I love Sean oh, Kemp. Yeah, so I nice. knew immediately. I was like, oh, he's calling. It. That's like that's Sean Kemp. Come on. So yes, man. Yes, man. <laughs> The average person don't know that. I'm glad you caught it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, thank you for your time. I have no more questions. If there's anything you want to um, let me know, you could do that. Oh, yeah. Now, first thing, let me just start it off by doing that. Shout out to the arts and music.com for even taking the time to reach out to have this interview. Brandon, everybody over there, I just appreciate the support. Um, other than that, I just want to say shout out to the whole WBL World Battle League. Um, for the music name, my man Stephen King, they all run it. And pretty much, just, just stay tuned, man. Brian Rain on Twitter and Instagram. That's it, man. I appreciate your time.